Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the control node. The control node is the base class for all UI related nodes. All user interface type nodes inherit from the control node, such as buttons and text areas. The control node adapts its anchors and margins based on the position and size of its relative parent. There are many things that can get you lost when trying to learn more about the control node. However, as a beginner, try to understand these four general property values that belong to the control node. They are the anchor, margin, grow direction, and rect, which is short for rectangle. Now you can think of the anchor as the starting position of your control node. Anchor is affected by your parent control node. And basically with anchor, you are deciding where along the edges of your parent control node you would like the position to start at. So when you maximize the anchor in the inspector, you're gonna have four property values, left, top, right, and bottom. By default, all of these are set to zero. However, the key thing to take away is that it will be a value between zero and one. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So again, in order for anchor to work, it must have a parent control node with a position and size. And so as you can see here, the big rectangle is our parent control node. And in this case, our child control node is just a simple square button. My advice is that the top level control node should cover the entire game screen area that your player is able to see. As you can see here, this cross like symbol is our anchor. By default, we will start at the top leftmost area of the parent control node. And again, that is dependent on the position and size of your parent control node. Now let's look at some values that we can change in order to reposition our child control node. So in this case, if we change our anchor to left one and right one, we're gonna anchor our button to the top right of our game screen. If we set all values to one, we're gonna anchor our button to the bottom right of the screen. If we only have the top and bottom values set to one, we're going to anchor our button to the bottom left of our screen. And if all values are set to default, which is just all zeros, we're gonna position to the top left side of our screen, just our anchor. And assuming we haven't done anything to our margin values. Now, if we change these values, theoretically, we can get our anchor to appear anywhere on the screen. For example, if we want it to be at the exact center, we would set our anchor to be 0.5 all across the board. And that will set our anchor position to the middle of the screen. However, again, as a beginner, just try to understand how to position your anchors into the four corners of your game screen, assuming that your parent control node encompasses the entire game screen. And so from the basics, you can move to more complex things. For example, by setting our right value for the anchor to one, we can, in this case, set our anchor positions to the opposite sides of the screen in order to get this effect. And if that is an effect you want, you can go right for it. And anchor allows you to do quite complex things. However, again, just try to focus on the simple concepts of positioning on the four corners of your game screen. So let's look at margin. Margin is just how many pixels away from the anchor we're going to position and size our control node in terms of the x-axis and the y-axis. Margin comes with four different values we can adjust for. They are the left, top, right, and bottom values. In this case, what you see is a simple square. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, we have our parent control node, which encompasses the entire game screen. Our anchor is set to the origin, in this case, zero, zero. And if we look at our margin, left and top is set to zero and right and bottom are both set to 100. And so let's look at left and right first. So when we say left zero, we're saying that we would like to be, or rather, we would like the left side of our control node to be zero pixels away from the anchor position. And in this case, zero pixels away from the anchor position is just the anchor position. Now for the right margin, what we're saying is we want to be 100 pixels away from the anchor position in terms of the right side of our control node. And so if we were to count 
100 pixels away from the origin, we would place our right side of the control node 100 pixels away. And that's how we get this link, 100. And we can do the same thing for top and bottom as well. So again, we would like our top margin value to be zero pixels away from the anchor position. And so what we say is, okay, zero pixels away from anchor is just zero. And so we don't do anything for the top side of our control node. However, for the bottom side of our control node, we would like it to be 100 pixels away. And so if we go 100 pixels down, we're going to set our margin 100 pixels away. And what you will get is a square shape control node. In this case, our button is going to be a square. Now, if we were to set all the values to zero for our margin values, we are either going to do one of two things. Either our control node disappears or our control node will set itself to be the minimum size allowable. In this case, since the example is a button, I believe the button has a minimum size of 12 by 12. I'm not sure. However, the button will not disappear. But if you set margin to all zero, it will set itself to the minimum value possible for the button control node. Now that I set it back to a square, let's see what happens when we change the left and top margin values. So in this case, we change the left margin value to 50 pixels away from the anchor. And as you can see here, if we were to calculate for our shape, we would say the left side of our button control node, we would like it to be 50 pixels away from the anchor. And so if we go 50 pixels, this is where our left side of our button control node starts. And then because right is 100 pixels, what we're saying is 100 pixels away from the anchor for the right side of our button node. And when we calculate for that, we get this rectangle shape where the width is basically 50 pixels. Right minus left will equal the width for our button control node. We can do the same thing for top and bottom as well. If we were to do 50 pixels away from the anchor in relation to the top side of our control node, what we will do is calculate again. So if we start from the top, we say we would like our top side of the button control node to be 50 pixels away from the anchor. So when you calculate for 50 pixels, we start right here. And then we do the same thing for bottom. So bottom has to be 100 pixels away from anchor. And then we get this square shape that basically halved itself from its original size. Keep in mind when you affect margin, you are going to affect the rectangle values size as well. Speaking of the rectangle sizes, the third thing to try to understand about the control node is in fact its rectangle values or properties that the rectangle provides the control node. In this case, try to understand these four different properties, position, rotation, size, and minimum size. Now the position property is not how many pixels you want to adjust for in terms of the control nodes anchor. Instead, it's going to be the game screen's origin. So just keep that in mind. Position is in relation to the game screen origin, not the anchor position. Same thing with rotation. Rotation is in relation to its pivot offset and not the anchor. Now, size and minimum size is where things get a little interesting. Size is, of course, the size we would like our control node to be. In this case, because it's a button, we can control for its width and height. And minimum size is basically telling our control node button that it can change its width and height value. However, it cannot go below a minimum threshold. By default, minimum size is set to zero. Now here's an interesting question. What happens if you set the minimum size to a value that is larger than your current size? So in this case, by default, minimum size is set to zero and zero on the X and Y axis respectively. Our size is a square 100 pixels by 100 pixels. However, what happens when we set minimum size to be a value that's greater than 100 by 100? Well, what happens is when you change the value of minimum size to a value greater than the current size, you're just going to change the size value. It's fairly straightforward. However, the next question is, in what direction are we going to grow if minimum size becomes larger than the current size. And that will depend on the values of your grow direction in the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. By default, they are both set to end. However, you can choose begin and both. Let's look at those. So our control node has a grow direction 
and by default horizontal and vertical are set to the value end and what we're saying is that when our minimum size is bigger than our current size when we change the current size to match the minimum size we're going to grow away from the origin position and so since our square doubled, it's going to grow to the right and grow towards the bottom. However, if we set both of these to begin and we were to double our control node button, instead of growing away from the origin, we're going to grow towards the origin. And so in this case, when our square doubles in size, what we're going to do is grow upwards on the height value and grow towards the left on the width value. And lastly, if we set grow direction to both, we're going to grow evenly either on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. And so the growth, or rather as the size increases, the growth is halved in both directions depending on the vertical axis, or rather depending on the axis you are growing in. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if control node grows or shrinks, it's not going to fix the margin value for you. And so you may end up with a position that you may not have intended to have. So just keep that in mind that as you grow and shrink, you need to edit your margin value as well in order to get the position you want to show to the player on the screen. Now, if all of this was confusing to you, that's okay. The relationship between anchor, margin, rectangle value, and grow direction because of different moving pieces and because of how they are related to each other, one value will affect the others. Anchor affects margin, rectangle, and grow direction, whereas rectangle can affect margin, but not so much grow direction, and it just goes on. But lucky for us, Godot provides us with a nice little utility, and that is the layout utility. So when you click on a control node, you're going to get some options in green, which is specific for the control nodes, and one of them is going to be layout. When you click on layout, you're going to get a drop down. It's going to offer you more choices than what I have on screen. However, notice that the first four choices are the four corners, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, and also other things such as center. Well, you can go ahead and click that and Godot will automatically apply the anchors position and margin values to get your control node oriented on the screen for you. Now, if you are a beginner starting out on your control node journey, my advice is the following. First, set a top level control node that should cover the entire game screen and this control node should do absolutely nothing. Then position your child control nodes anchors on one of the four corners of your game screen or rather your top level control node which encompasses the entire game screen. Lastly, what you should do is use margins to move your control nodes position relative to the anchor position. I've uploaded a small sample project onto GitHub, so please feel free to download that and play around with positioning the button control node in relation to its parents. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button and thank you for clicking the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, if you're interested in other videos, please feel free to check out the Trello page I set up in the link in the description down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.